Welcome back to my channel. So we are going to go over one of Chili's most recent jail calls that he allows to be put on his channel. It's not like these calls are being taken or requested. I know um, jailhouse calls or I know prison calls. I don't know about jailhouse calls. Prison calls are not public record. I don't know if jailhouse calls are, but <clears throat> yeah, he allows these to be put on his his channel. And as usual, he's sitting there whining and complaining and blah, blah, blah. But yet he fails to admit that he put himself there. If you don't want to live like that, if you don't want to be there, don't put yourself there. This is all because of his own behavior, his own actions, his own bad decisions. And yet he's going to whine, cry, and complain about it. And the only reason he's doing it is because he wants donations. He wants people to feel sorry for him. He wants the attention. And we all know that's the truth. He talks about he, he may end up with a shitty YouTube channel after all this is said and done and that he doesn't care. But it's the only thing he cares about is his YouTube channel because he can't grift, steal, fraud, and con people without his YouTube channel. He tried on TikTok and got kicked off TikTok, so YouTube's all he has. Anyways, enjoy the video. A self-proclaimed First Amendment auditor and YouTuber will remain in jail. RJ's Lena Bleach explains why his bail was denied. Jose De Castro was sentenced to 180 days in jail last month by Las Vegas Justice of the Peace Ann Zimmerman for obstructing a police officer and resisting arrest. In a hearing today, De Castro was looking to receive bail while he appeals his conviction, but that request was denied. While in jail, DeCastro has called into a live stream hosted on his YouTube channel where he talked about Zimmerman and stated, quote, I do not know how she can sleep at night. He also said he took, quote, full responsibility for being sent to jail. So yesterday, after my picture was in the paper and every inmate in this room came up to me and said, you're this guy and that's like a double-edged sword in here because you don't want to be popular in jail. You just don't want to be popular. You want to stay under the radar, read your book, find your own business, which is what I do. I stay on my bed and I just read my book all day. I don't interact with anybody other than for a couple minutes and say, hey, how you doing? Okay, cool, man. All right, yeah, good luck. And then I go right back to my bunk and I read. Well, let's see. First of all, he's not a First Amendment auditor. He is a self-proclaimed constitutional law scholar. Um, he'll be the first one to tell anybody that that's what he is. But he tries so desperately to fit in with some group that he tries to fit in with the auditors. And even most of them don't want him. The worst of the worst will take him because, well, he's vile and so are they. And they need other vile people to help them push their cause. Other than that, he's not a First Amendment auditor. He's not even a constitutional law scholar, but we all know that. He's just a desperate wannabe activist who thinks he can become governor and completely change a state's constitution. He has no understanding of the law. He has no understanding of case law. The only reason he does this is because he wants money. Attention and money. That's all Chile is about. That's all Chile's ever been about. And now he's finally in jail where he belongs. This is a long time coming. <clears throat> this should have been done a long time ago. He put himself there. He can't blame the judge, nothing like that. And where the news report says that Chile took full blame for himself being in jail, where exactly did he take full blame for being in jail? I've not heard that. I don't think anybody else has heard that. And if you have, please let me know. Because Chile will never, ever take responsibility for his actions. He will never take responsibility for what happens to him. These are consequences that have been needed and that have been coming for, like I said, a long time. And all he can do is cry and whine. I also find it very hard to believe that Chili is just sitting on his bed reading a book, not talking to anybody, because we all know that Chili cannot live an active day-to-day -day life unless somebody is paying attention to him. So... 
yeah, he's talking up a storm. If he's being thrown in the hole, great. You don't want him around the other inmates because then he's going to start talking all his rhetoric. But I seriously doubt he's being thrown in the hole as much as he says he's being thrown in the hole. But we'll get to that in a moment. But when my picture was in the paper yesterday, that they, they, I, I'm not going to tell you their policies, procedures, and protocols because I don't want to get in trouble, but I can tell you they... Yeah, I don't know what the hell Chili is talking about, but they don't arrest you while you're on your bed in jail. They may come and get you and take you to the hole or come and get you and take you to see your lawyer or see your visitor. But they do not come and arrest you over and over and over and over while you're in jail. Chili uses these words on purpose to trigger his audience. He believes as long as he uses words like this or trigger words like this, it will piss them off more and more and make them feel sorry for him even more than he's already got them feeling sorry for him. But no, they do not come around and arrest you consistently while you're already in jail. You get arrested. I just picture what that is. And that's what happens to you right on your bed. And for whatever reason, you know. Chili, they're not going to put you in the hole just because your name and face was in a paper or on the news. You're lying to your subscribers for more sympathy and money as usual. They will put you in the hole for, you know, some infractions like fighting another inmate, or even just talking back to a guard, which, guess what, is one thing you are notorious for doing, is talking back and talking to shit to, to police officers constantly. Do I think you're talking the exact same way to these guards in the jail? Absolutely. So if you are constantly in the hole as often as you think you are, then it's more than likely due to your own behavior and actions. I don't think for one second they're just putting you in the hole because they don't like the way you look or they don't like the way you're reading your book or hell, your picture was in the paper and your name was in the paper. Stop lying to your subscribers. Stop trying to make it out to be something it's not. If you were put in the hole, guarantee it was your fault. Just, you know what I mean? Like you're popular in there and you're in a place where someone can do what they want with your life. And so you think, you know, they do follow a very rigid set of policies, procedures, and protocols, and I have never seen them beat, kick, or punch anybody. So that's different than any other jail I've ever been to. I've been arrested. I just don't have a criminal record. So Wait. Okay, first of all, Jilly is, this is the third time he said it. Supposedly, he's so popular in jail. No, you're not popular. I guarantee you that most of the inmates in there can't stand you. I mean, most of society cannot stand you, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure the inmates can't stand you as well. And what do you mean you've been arrested but you don't have a criminal record? That's interesting, Chili, that you claim you do not have a criminal record. anybody 
regards to the door. So you lost it. You just completely lost it and fell apart. Yet you act all big and tough on the outside and in a courtroom. But then when you're forced to face the consequences to your actions and your behavior, you break down like a child in jail. Though at the same time, you're sitting in phone calls saying, I'm going to do this when I get out, and I'm going to do that, and I need everybody to pack the court or the courthouse and blah, blah, blah. You're still wanting to talk all big and bad. And it's like, you can only fake yourself for so long. We all know this is not you. This is all a facade for YouTube so that you can take people's money. In actuality, you are a soft little snowflake that falls apart at a whim. And you're the one admitting it. You're actually admitting it. I don't feel a bit sorry for you at all. Like anybody else, I think I would feel bad for. But you have been asking for this for so long, purposefully antagonizing and harassing police officers trying to get arrested just so you can beg for money because you were arrested. Well, you finally got arrested and then you finally went to court and the outcome is not what you thought it would be. You thought you could bully your way out of going to jail and well, it backfired on you. And instead of sitting here doing phone call after phone call with this whole tiniest violin in the world, why don't you just suck it up, be a man, and do your six months? You may have to do even longer because you're still going back to court, what, uh, today, I believe. Just suck it up, be the man you claim to be, and do your time. And when you get out, be a better person. Stop with this whole bullshit on being a constitutional law scholar and this and that and you're an activist and all. Of, you're nothing. Get a real job. Get a home. Stop living in your van. Stop living off of everybody else's money. And then be a productive member of society. You couldn't cut it as an actor when you were fired as the Black Power Ranger after a week. So... You figure you can go around YouTube and think that harassing police officers and society is going to get you where you need to be or where you want to be. And, well, all it's going to do is keep putting you back in jail now. You still have open warrants in Ohio. Remember that. And he walked in and he walked up to the front door and I, I was caused not to arrest me. And then he starts walking down my row and he's getting closer he comes right up to my bunk, and then he looks at my bunk number, and then so, and then he slides down two more bunk numbers south of me. And I hear myself go, I had been holding my breath, and I had no idea. And then I turn to the three guys next to me, and one of the guys, um, we'll call him, um, we'll, we'll, we'll call him Ryan. I don't want to give anybody's names. He, Ryan looks at me and goes, dude, I told you they weren't coming for you, but he didn't know. We all thought when Mr. P walked in that I was going to the hole. All of us, all of us said, me and the three guys who were all kind of on my wavelength. Again, for no reason, because according to Chili, the guards walk into the dorm and randomly choose, hmm, I don't like the way he looks today. Let's throw him in the hole. That's not the way it goes. So the rest of the phone call is basically Chili talking about how he made it on the news and this, this, and that. It's like, it's all about him being on the news, the attention he's getting, and his channel, and money. He needs money. It's like all the money that he has been given, you'd think that he'd just go to commissary and get some food and he'd be happy. But no, he's never happy. He needs more, more, more. This is all just a big sympathy train for, for Chili. He's never going to learn his lesson. No matter how long he stays in jail, he will continue to act the way he does. And he's going to cry and whine and pretend like he's this softy in jail. The minute he gets out, he's going to start all his rhetoric again. He's going to promote hurting police officers. And he's just, he's just going to go back to normal. 
I don't know what else to say about that. He's, it's chilly. He will never learn his lesson. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Be safe. See you, la see you later. Mm-hmm.